Welcome to React Holiday Day 10, Spirit Fingers. That's right, Spirit Fingers Day. I can't believe we're already on double digits. It's so good. I get to use all of these, these bad boys. Um, that means we only have 15 days left. And heads up, I am not going to do much on Christmas. I'm just going to be like, Merry Christmas or enjoy your day off of work. <laughs> um, so 14 days left, 14 today, we're talking about something super important. Now, um, I have, um, today's day 10. I forked this from day nine, but if you didn't follow over the weekend, um, day nine is going to look like a cluster to you because we talked about something that's like wild and crazy and not related to anything that we have built up to this point. So anyway, um, you can watch those videos if you want, but we're working on day 10, which really it, it picks up where we left off on day seven. So FYI, uh, you can check it out here. Uh, I will put that in the email, obviously. And um, yeah, so there's a big question right now of if we have, um, you know, if we have resources um, to handle data, um, and we have, uh, let's see, so we have resources for data. We have, um, what is it? We, we have a bunch of hooks now, which allow us to pull things into function components, pull data into function components, um, context, whatever. Um, do we still need render props? And that's a really good question because those are two areas that we have um, needed render props for up to this point. Um, now, the short answer is yes, absolutely, we're going to need render props. The slightly longer answer is that we'll just use them a lot less. Actually, that was a shorter answer than the first one. Anyway, it's all short. We're still gonna need them. We're gonna use them a lot less. However, I want to show you um, the context consumer API um, is using render props. And we need this because classes can't take advantage of hooks. So even though there is a use context hook, we can't use that in a class. So we need to use this. A lot of libraries are going to continue to use that render prop pattern. It's still very good. A lot of your code most assuredly still has that in it. So it's good knowledge to have. I want to show you today one area where you'll probably end up using render props even more um, now that we have have resources. And that's going to be in rendering items for lists. This is one area where React, uh, render props really shine. And in fact, if you've looked at React Native, this is kind of the origin of the render prop. There have been in these lists, in the React Native lists, um, a way to basically say render item and then give a function um, and render each item with that function. Um, this has been around since like what 2015. Um, so this is a pattern that is going to continue and I think that it's only going to become more popular with lists now that we um, now that now that we have resources and kind of this um, markup I guess is going to be mixed with these reads. Um, we're not going to have these kind of pure data components that we might have been able to create with render props. So I mean, you, could, you get the idea. So we're going to focus on this chunk of code today and actually um, using a render prop to raise that back up into the um, into our app component. OK, now. The reason why and I'm, I don't, I don't want to show you anything that I wouldn't actually do for work to in production code. The, the reason that I don't like this, I, I have a problem even kind of making this first version of it to, to, to be problematic, because effectively we have to create this on select API. This is something that we have just made up or I made up. You followed me. I just made this up, right? So it has this name that I have to remember every time I use this Pokemon list. Maybe someone on else on another team has another list style component and they used a, on some other verb. And now you have to remember the differences between those two. It's a joy of mine being able to remove API 
um, from these components because the less API that you have to remember, the more productive that you can be, I believe, um, long-term, cross components, cross libraries. That's one of the values of render props in the first place. So I want to, instead of giving a function to use every time an item is clicked, you know, and we see that we're taking this and then that gets mapped to on click. Um, I'd like to flip this and I'd like to use a render prop to control the rendering of each item. Now, if you're not familiar with React Native, this might be the first time you've seen this. So um, I'll try to detail every step. So uh, first of all, we are going to, uh, I'm really bad at remembering uh, stuff. So I'm gonna comment this out instead of deleting it. Again, I'll use that really funky comment syntax that you have to use in JSX. And I'm going to write it again. So Pokemon list, okay. Now this time, instead of on select, what I want to do is I want to handle the rendering of every element right here. So um, we're going to call this render item, okay? Um, now we could call it render Pokemon, um, but I, I, I really like, you know, because it's a list running the item, it just kind of like all makes sense. I like this generic term because if it did catch on, well then all of these list style components, you could have like a, API parity, right? Okay, render item. So we're going to give this a function, okay? Uh, we don't know what arguments it's gonna take. We'll figure that out in a moment. Okay, so this is a fairly easy transformation. We're gonna take this whole um, function that exists in this map and we're going to um, delete it, okay? We're gonna then move down here and paste it in. Oh. Um, taking our Pokemon as the argument, okay? And all of this is doing the same stuff that it did before. Now on select, okay, we'll get to that in a second, right? So all of this is doing the same magic that we did before. Now we need to uh, call it. So in our map, we're going to, instead of taking on select, we're gonna take render item as our, uh, as our prop. And we're going to call, oops, for each Pokemon, we're going to call render item, <laughs> item with our Pokemon. Okay, cool, this worked. Now, when we tap that thing, it's trying to call on select, okay? So that's, that's busted, but our list rendered, this is a good thing. Okay, so we've been able to delegate that back up to the app, the rendering of this thing. Now, so what do we want to do here? On click, we were calling the on select that was provided to us. So we don't need to do that anymore. Uh, on click, we can call this function directly with the ID. Let's try this again. So three, five, perfect. That's amazing. So we were able to kind of just copy and paste and move things around and um, now, all of this, whoops, I'm gonna save this for some, some formatting. Um, so, so all of this is a lot of just tidier now. Okay, so we have, we're rendering our list item, but then also like for each item, we are unopinionated now about which component gets rendered for each list item. Uh, we're delegating that back up to the implementing component. Beautiful. So now instead of having to pass down like specific um, props for like how to handle something on each list item, how to handle uh, like an effect. Basically, we're just saying on click, do the thing that we want to do. Now we can even use this new component boundary, this render prop uh, transaction to improve, uh, to augment the API, right? So let's, um, let's delete this and we're going to call this with Pokemon ID. I know that doesn't exist yet because it ex doesn't exist on the API. And we're going to change this also to Pokemon ID. Then we're gonna go up here. And up here, we're going to now create a new object from the Pokemon. And we're going to spread out all of the details on it. Now, if I try to do this, it's gonna break, right? Because it, there is no ID. However, I can now add additional or augment this with additional data. So um, we can post in the Pokemon URL split here. 
See where I'm going with this? Um, and now we have an ID. So all these places that we used ID down here, now we have that. So now we can use it. Isn't that cool? So that is um, that is that. We're going to delete this. Um, just a quick recap. So uh, we have this Pokemon list, right? It consumes a resource and we want to be able to uh, have control over rendering each item, specifically on this on click, right? We don't want to have to create new APIs for um, for doing the on click here. Maybe one we want to add other like on a mouse center or stuff like that. We want to have full control over this element. And this render prop for rendering each item gives us that control. Look, I can even change this to a um, to whoops to a uh, just a regular list item now. So all of this, uh, all this is great. So we do that by um, again, we have our resource, it's going to get that data. We call map for our, each Pokemon. We're going to call this function that we've taken as a prop and uh, render it with the Pokemon data, which we've been able to augment with an ID, which is awesome. So that's it. Render props are here to stay. I think that in this case, you're going to end up seeing this a lot more um, now that we have these these resources kind of intermingled with these uh, this markup or whatever you want to call it. So that is um, that is one place that you're going to see render props even thrive. So have a great day. I hope that this was beneficial to you and um, feel free to comment if you have questions, email me if the same, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow.